Number 9. Russian Helicopter Graveyard Built in 1938, outside the Russian city of St. Petersburg, Goryelova originally functioned as a Soviet Air Force base that housed military aircraft and parts. It was home to several different regiments, as well as an aircraft repair facility. The military stopped using the site after the Soviet Union fell. Nowadays, it serves as an aircraft repair center and an airfield for small planes, as well as the headquarters of a local flight school. Signs of the property's military past are evident in a fenced-off part of the runway, which contains a helicopter graveyard. The decommissioned choppers began accumulating there during the 90s and have decayed from neglect, along with several administrative buildings that are no longer used. There are also two abandoned radio towers and a weather station. While nobody has bothered to maintain the deserted vehicles or structures, the owners apparently care enough to station guards at the site to deter trespassers who might want to snoop around or collect scrap metal. It's likely that the helicopters are being kept for their parts by the repair shop, despite their sad state. Number 8. The Devil Slide Bunker off Highway 1 in San Mateo County, California, there's an odd cement structure that appears as if it's balancing precariously atop a mountain known as the Devil's Slide. The graffiti-covered building is a sight for sore eyes, and it looks as if it could fall into the sea below at any moment. Built during World War II, it's an abandoned military bunker that once functioned as a triangulation station and an observation post. It was one of the six structures that were built along the coastline to protect San Francisco Harbor from an attack by the Japanese. Before the advent of radar, military staff watched out for threats the old-fashioned way, from a place with an advantageous view with the help of binoculars. The bunker was abandoned after the war ended. It has since fallen into ruin. During the 70s, the earth surrounding it was excavated for a planned construction project that never went through, which is why the structure looks so awkwardly positioned. A private owner bought it in 1983 only to let it further decay. While it seems like there are no photos of interior available anywhere online, it's quite clear that numerous trespassers have left their mark on the outside. Number 7. St. Nazaire Submarine Base during World War II, the Nazis built five large fortified submarine stations called U-boat stations along the Atlantic Front. One of them was located in the seaside commune of Saint-Nazaire in German-occupied France. Saint-Nazaire was one of the largest Atlantic harbors in France, making it desirable to the Nazis. They invaded in 1940 and immediately began using the site for submarine operations. Built over a 16-month span between 1941 and 1942, the U-boat pen at St. Nazaire was designed to withstand British air raid bombs. It was constructed using 17 million cubic feet at a roof that was 31 feet thick in some places. Measuring 980 feet long and 59 feet high, the colossal structure had room for even the largest German battleships. In addition to storing and repairing ships and submarines, the facility had 62 workshops, 150 offices, 92 dormitories, 4 kitchens, 2 electrical plants, a restaurant, and a hospital. It housed hundreds of people at any given time. The British Navy launched an amphibious attack on the base on March 28, 1942. In a mission codenamed Operation Chariot, they blew up the dry dock and it remained out of commission for the rest of the war. And the British won, but their victory came at the immense cost of hundreds of men dying and being taken prisoner. The site sat abandoned for a number of years before it was reopened to the public. Today, it's home to a few museums, a nightclub, a cafe, an art exhibit, and more. Number 6. Asmara Tank Graveyard The Eritrean War for Independence is one of Africa's longest conflicts in recent history, lasting from 1961 to 1991. After 30 years of fighting, Eritrea secured its independence from Ethiopia. It was perhaps an unlikely victory. The Ethiopian military had support from the Soviet Union, while Eritrean soldiers defended themselves wearing sandals made from tire rubber and using weapons captured from the enemy. 
but the Eritreans were determined to win their sovereignty despite their disadvantages, and they refused to give up without a fight, destroying a lot of the Ethiopians' military equipment in the process. Fearful that seeing evidence of their successes would boost the Eritreans' morale, the Ethiopians stashed the damaged machinery at a site outside the capital of Asmara, where it was hidden from view. It still sits on the city's outskirts today, where it's amassed into a rusting graveyard of broken tanks and other vehicles. While the site is open to the public, very few international visitors gain access to it. Eritrea is second only to North Korea when it comes to the difficulty of getting a visa, and tourists are required to get an additional permit to visit the tank graveyard. Number 5. Fort Ord Fort Ord was officially designated as a U.S. Army base in 1940, although its military use dates back to the First World War. Soldiers were happy to be stationed at the sprawling 28,000-acre property, which sits along California's Monterey Bay. After all, what's not to like? It was near the beach and in a place that's known for its beautiful warm weather. The site grew to include 42 buildings, including barracks, administrative structures, a sewage treatment plant, and more. In the late 1980s, it became clear that human activity had taken its toll on the area. Fort Ord was heavily polluted with civilian and commercial waste along with underground tanks that were leaking petroleum into the soil. It's no surprise then that the property was slated for closure the following year as part of the government's efforts to downsize the country's military installations. The base officially closed in 1994. Extensive cleanup efforts ensued, and in 2012, former President Barack Obama designated Fort Ord as a national monument. It's home to several golf courses that were once only open to military members but are now open to the public, as well as California State University, Montree Bay, and several housing developments for its students and their families. The Veterans Transition Center, which helps homeless veterans get back on their feet is located on the property. There are over 83 miles of recreational trails in and around the Fort Ord National Monument, as well as a former veterinary hospital for war horses, which was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 2014. Around 20% of the original buildings still stand. It's clear, based on their shattered windows, peeling lead paint, and plant overgrowth, that they've been left at the mercy of the elements. There are plans in order to strip most of the structures of their toxic materials and dismantle them, but for now, they remain, serving as a crumbling reminder of Fort Ord's glory days. Number 4. Chanute Air Force Base the Chanute Air Force Base in Rantoul, Illinois, functioned as a technical training center. It opened at the tail end of World War I after the U.S. government appropriated money to build up the Army Air Service. When the war ended, the military faced drastic cuts. Because Chanute was built in a hurry, it had already begun falling into disrepair by 1920 and was in line to be decommissioned. But the government ultimately decided against closing the base, and it was expanded over the following years. During the late 1930s, two massive hangars were built, along with housing for 15,000 recruits. The Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941 spurred an influx of eager military enrollees along with a housing shortage at Chanute. At its peak, it was home to 25,000 recruits, many of whom had to stay in tents. The famed all-black fighter squadron known as the Tuskegee Airmen trained there. Toward the end of the Cold War, the U.S. government downsized the military. After operating for 75 years, Chanute was finally slated for closure. It was the country's third oldest active base when it finally shuttered its doors in 1993. Parts of the property have been redeveloped as motels, retirement communities, restaurants, a fitness center, data center, and a few light manufacturing facilities. Much of the facility remains abandoned because it's contaminated. Cleanup efforts are ongoing, and some buildings have been demolished. Photographer Walter Arnold snuck onto the base, which has been designated as an EPA Superfund site. 
He told Atlas Obscura that he was shocked by how deteriorated it was and said that it looked like it had been abandoned for 50 years. It was covered in graffiti, mold, asbestos, and littered with ceiling tiles and other debris. Old curtains, furniture, telephones, a vintage arcade game, and other objects are scattered throughout the buildings. Sadly, the closure of Chanute devastated the local economy, according to Arnold. Half the population left and home values plummeted, and the area is reportedly still recovering today. Number 3. The Maginot Line During the 1930s, France built a series of concrete structures along its borders with Italy, Switzerland, Luxembourg, and Belgium. Known as the Maginot Line, the 280-mile-long string of fortifications was meant to prevent a German invasion by forcing the Nazis to go around the structures through the seemingly impenetrable Ardennes Forest. The Maginot Line was extremely well-built, but it was nevertheless a huge failure. Its designers had relied mainly on their knowledge of past wars and had failed to consider the potential of up-and-coming technology. When the time came for Hitler's forces to get past the line, they simply barreled through the woods using tanks. They surrounded the French and their British allies, pushing them back toward the coast, and took 500,000 prisoners of war as they successfully captured the Maginot Line. The French reoccupied the structures after the war but ultimately abandoned them in 1966. Parts of the Maginot Line were auctioned off while others were simply left to deteriorate. The military continued to use one section into the 1990s but cleared out completely after the Soviet Union fell. Today, some of the structures are used as wine cellars, a mushroom farm, and a disco. Number 2. Bluey East 2 in 1941, the American military established an Army Air Force base on the island of Ikatek in eastern Greenland. It was built under an agreement that the U.S. made with Denmark to protect the island, which came with an urgent need for airfields. Known as Bluey East II, it was just one of 30 American World War II and Cold War era bases throughout Greenland. They've all been abandoned, and it would be an understatement to say that the U.S. left behind a lot of messes. Bluey East 2 shut down in 1947 after operating for just five years. It's littered with asbestos-ridden buildings, rusting trucks, and other vehicles, and as many as 200,000 corroding aviation fuel barrels, many of which are still full. There are also rumors of hundreds of cases of unexploded dynamite stashed at the site. Because Greenland didn't gain any of its own decision-making power until 1979, it had no say in the American military presence in previous years. Its citizens, who survived mainly on hunting and fishing, were left disgusted and concerned by the deserted junk, which raises obvious environmental concerns. American photographer Ken Bauer petitioned the American government to clean up the site after he visited in 2014. It received over 36,000 signatures, which is less than the minimum of 100,000 that's required for a petition to reach the White House. Anyway, a clause in the original agreement with Denmark exempted the U.S. from any responsibility in the cleanup. In 2017, the Danish government agreed to pay Greenland $23 million over over to clean Bluey East 2. The project began in 2019, but it'll take years to complete, especially because the work can only be done during the summer months. Number 1. Plokstina Missile Base as the Cold War heated up during the late 1950s, the U.S. began building underground missile bases. Naturally, the Soviet Union followed suit, building one of its first underground bases in Lithuania in 1960. Located in a remote forest near the village of Plokshyai, the Plokshtina base housed medium-range missiles. Construction costs ran into the equivalent of billions of dollars in today's currency. It's around the same cost as building a small town or city, and a small city's worth of around 10,000 soldiers moved into the area to complete the project, which was kept tightly under wraps from the local population. 
but the Soviet military couldn't hide the Plokshtina base from US intelligence, which discovered it in 1978. It was later revealed that the site consisted of four deep shafts, including an underground missile silo. The structures were covered by concrete domes that moved on rails and could be opened in a half hour's time. A team of 300 military members ran the base, which was surrounded by an electric fence. Thankfully, no missiles were ever launched from the property. The base was shut down just 12 years after it began its operation, and it was abandoned for good when the Soviet Union collapsed. Soon enough, it became a popular attraction among urban explorers and thieves looking for scrap metal. One of the four silos was opened to visitors as a Cold War museum in 2012 after undergoing extensive renovations. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.